the following announcement has been paid for by Perched on the Top Rope. What's up, guys? This is the Murderhawk Monster, Lance Archer, and you are watching Perched on the Top Rope. And watch out, because I'll choke slam you on the way down. Welcome, everyone, to Perched on the Top Rope. I am your host, former Dirt Sheet writer from Ringside News, Daily DDT, the Sportster, the Richest, and Sports Kita. I am Lee Walker, and this is going to be the AEW All Out Predictions Show. Now, All Out will be airing Saturday, September 7th at the Now Arena in Chicago, and this marks the event's fourth time at the venue. They've been there in 2019, they were there for 2021 and 2022. Now this event normally takes place during Labor Day weekend, and although the 2024 event had originally been scheduled for the holiday on Sunday, September 1st, AEW decided to push the event back by a week due to fans concerns of it taking place literally one week after all in which had occurred the year prior but don't worry folks in a short amount of time they have created some great storylines for this pay-per-view which you can catch on a lot of different streaming services such as bleacher report tiller tv Just to name a few, again, this event is taking place on Saturday, and there are eight great matches, starting with the International Championship, as the champ Will Ospreay will take on Pac. And this all started for this match uh, back in July, because on a July 10th episode of Dynamite, Pac defeated Castagnoli, Cal. Kyle Fletcher, and Tamahiro Ishii in a Global Glory four-way match to earn a AEW International Championship match at All Out. Now, that seems like it's uh, quite a ways out, July, August, September. You know, fans, if you're like me, the attention span isn't there, and you probably even forgot that this was even a thing. But I just reminded you in case you forgot, so there's that. Now, the following week, Will Ospreay actually lost the championship to MJF, who, as you all recall, rebranded the title as the American Championship. But Will Ospreay regained regained the championship at All In, thankfully. And then restoring it to the international championship again. And thus, that set this up for Pac to take on Osprey. Will Osprey just won this, and Pac is already a champion, even though he was, I believe, the first two belt champion in AEW. I don't think it's going to be a repeat. For him in this instance, so I'm going to say Will Ospreay wins this match. Now, the next match I have up is the AEW World Tag Team Championship. As the Young Bucks will be taking on the Blackpool Combat Club. And there's really not much of a story here unless you watched AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday. That's when we saw everything go down for this match uh claudio castagnoli and wheeler yuda are the trios champions so i really can't see AEW putting the championships on them i mean if they did with you know Pac winning the international championship then you know that'd be a lot of gold for for three men be pretty cool i'd also think i don't think we've ever seen a a trios team with that much gold i might be wrong but i don't know um the young bucks have always been you know very vocal in teasing on social media now their big thing teasing is being part-time wrestlers (laughs) uh it makes me laugh i'm sorry 
not sorry. Anyway, the the young bucks have been teasing that on their X profile, being part timers and this and that, and a lot of people want to see the tag team championships be taken off those guys. And the only thing I can say is, is it has made it has made the AEW Tag Team Championship race a little more interesting. Because think about it, we're talking about the championships, though they're not being defended. So when the Young Bucks are on TV, wrestling or not wrestling, we're intrigued by it. We're booing them because we're not happy with what they're doing. But it has fans talking. So as much as you're not seeing the belts be defended as much, there's still tag team wrestling going on. Just not for those titles. At least not as often. I'm going to say the Young Bucks win this match. And our next match is a Chicago street fight between Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. And this feud all started when late in 2023... Nightingale and Chris Statlander had formed a team and they were managed by Stokely Hathaway. On May 26th at Double or Nothing, Statlander would turn her back on Nightingale. After a loss, Statlander decided to turn and Hathaway sided with Statlander. Now the feud would continue throughout the summer and during all in zero hour pre-show that took place on August 25th. The team of Nightingale and Tamahiro Ishii defeated Team Statlander and Hathaway in a mixed tag team match, thus allowing Nightingale and Ishii to choose the stipulation of the match between Nightingale and Statlander for all out. And oddly enough... Nightingale chose a Chicago street fight for AEW All Out being held in Chicago. It makes perfect sense. Uh, This has literally been going on since May. This is a five, six month feud that it's time for both to move on from and move on to the next stage of their careers. This match seems more up Statlander's alley. And I say that being a heel, she seems to be more ruthless and more aggressive than the Nightingale is in the ring. I think the right move would be to have Statlander win the match. She's the heel in this match seems way more fitting for her, to be honest with you. Now the next match I have is the Continental Championship being defended in a four-way match as the champion Okada takes on three wrestlers that are to be determined, and we won't know who they are until AEW has Rampage slash Collision on Friday night. So there's not much I can do there with that match. But the next match is MJF versus Daniel Garcia, and this match... Man, oh man, the things that went down this past dynamite. But let's get into the 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 logist of what's going on here. MJF made his return from his injury back in May and became friends with Daniel Garcia. However, after Garcia lost an AEW International Championship match to Will Ospreay at Dynamite Beach Break... MJF tried to help Daniel Garcia by cheating to win. However, MJF would turn on Garcia, brutalizing him and taking him out for the next several weeks. MJF then faced and defeated Osprey on the July 17th episode to win the championship, which he then again, unofficially rebranded the championship as the American Championship. And during MJF's defenses 
against Osprey at All In, a masked man came and attacked MJF. He would then reveal to be Daniel Garcia, which helped Osprey defeat MJF to regain the championship. And on the following Dynamite, Garcia confronted MJF. They agreed to have the match at All Out. In this past Dynamite, MJF was up in like the balcony. Daniel Garcia went to the ring. Both talked a lot of trash, threatened to break each other's necks, talked about moms and this and that, and there was a lot of shit talking going on. Garcia then would go to reach MJF up there in those nice balcony seats where he was met with security at the bottom level, and he made his way to the top, beating them up on the way. But then all of a sudden, boom. Daniel Garcia gets hit with a bottle from MJF. MJF rubs his blood on his face and takes the blood that he smeared on his hand and literally licked it off his fingers. Like he... Like a little kid who licks the sugary sub to substance that is remaining from their ice cream that was left on their hands. Disgusting. This is going to be a hell of a match. This is going to be one of those matches that could potentially steal the show. But there's a lot of matches on here for that. You know, it seems like when it comes to AEW, it, it's, you, ha- you compete with the person before you compete to have the match of the night that's just the way I feel as a heel to rebound from Osprey you want MJF to win but if you're going to build Daniel Garcia then Garcia needs the win over MJF and I'm gonna say that Garcia wins this match unless something happens where somebody comes out to save MJF which I don't know who, but there might be somebody out there willing to save MJF if the money's right. After all, Wardlow did it once before. But I'm still going to say with my gut and go with Daniel Garcia. And the next match is the AEW TBS Championship, which the champion Mercedes Monet is def- oh, I almost said defeating is defending against Hakira Shida well, on the recent episode of AEW Collision on August 31st. Uh, Hikira Shida defeated Queen Aminata, Thunder Rosa, and Serena Deeb in a four-way match to earn her championship opportunity against Mercedes Monet. And let's just be honest here. There is absolutely no way that Mercedes Monet loses this match. So that that's it. Mercedes Monet wins. She retains. I got nothing else for you on that one. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, the next match is the AEW World Championship as the champion Brian Danielson will take on Jack Perry. Now. At All In, Daniel Bryanson defeated Swerve Strickland in a title versus career match for the championship. And on the following Dynamite, Danielson addressed his in-ring career, stating that he would remain as a full-time wrestler until he lost the championship. He also said he would take on any and all challengers. And that's when Jack Perry interrupted noting that his pinfall victory over Danielson in the Anarchy in the Arena match at Double or Nothing in May and subsequently challenged Danielson for the title at All Out, which the match was made official. Jack Perry is your current TNT champion, so I can't necessarily see AEW putting their number one and number two championships together on one person at least at least not yet the company is not ready for something like that yet so with that being said 
and the fact that I don't think they're ready to have Brian Danielson uh, retire, I'm going to say that Daniel Bryanson remains your AEW world champion. And our last match is an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match as Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana will take on Hangman Adam Page. And this one's a long one, folks, how we got here. The feud between these two men dates back to Wrestle Dream in October 2023. Yeah, you heard me right, 2023. Uh, the two had faced each other at that event, which Strickland won. It became personal, and Strickland even broke into Paige's home, including going into his sleeping kid's room. A rematch occurred at Full Gear in November as a Texas death match, which Strickland also won, by the way. Both were in a three-way match for the AEW World Championship at Revolution in March 2024, where Samoa Joe retained the championship by submitting Paige. Paige would disappear from television while Strickland won the AEW Championship at Dynasty in April. Page returned in July and entered the Men's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament as the winner would earn a match at the AEW World Championship at All In. So this meant a possible rematch with Strickland. However, Page was unsuccessful in winning the tournament and Strickland lost the title at All In. So, At Dynamite, Strickland confronts Paige, and the two agreed to a steel cage match at All Out. On the the September 4th episode of AEW Dynamite, the contract signing was set for the cage match between Paige and Strickland. While Strickland arrived to sign the contract, Paige didn't show up. Earlier in the night, Strickland had done a promo vignette that he had bought his childhood house. So where was Paige? Paige went to Strickland's childhood home and proceeded to burn the house down while Strickland watched in horror. Tony Khan then in the post show announced that the steel cage match between Strickland and Paige would become a unsanctioned lights out steel cage match. So for those of you who complain about storytelling in AEW that is some storytelling in AEW and watching AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night close out with Hangman Adam Page sitting in a lawn chair drinking a beer while a house was up in flames like it was nothing that was incredible it was great storytelling now Strickland has won every match between the two of these men aside from the triple threat match, which both men lost due to Paige's fault, but both men lost. So so Paige has never defeated Strickland, and I'm thinking this lights out steel cage match is exactly where you see Adam Page, Hangman Page, win this match. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, this has been the AEW All Out Prediction Show as AEW All Out is taking place this Saturday. And you can watch it on Bleacher Report, Tiller TV, forty nine ninety five, dollars uh, Eight great matches on the card. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash perched on the top rope or youtube.com at perched on the top rope. Make sure you subscribe. We have awesome interviews for you to check out, awesome unboxing videos, card breaks, and more. Again, YouTube.com at Perched on the Top Rope. And don't forget to go and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcast for Perched on the Top Rope. But also, don't forget, we're not just on Apple, folks. We are on Google, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Podbay, Red Circle, you name it. We're there. It's Perched on the Top Rope. We're also on every other form of social media as Facebook, facebook.com slash perched on the top rope. X is perched top rope. Instagram, perched on the top rope podcast. Threads, perched on the top rope podcast. Twitch, twitch.tv slash perched on the top rope. Remember fans, 
Spoiler freeze, the way to be. I'm out.